Buildings play a significant role in our daily lives, providing places for us to learn, live, work and play. But the sector also accounts for up to a third of global emissions, so action to reduce emission from the building sector is essential if we're to limit global warming to below 2 degrees. For the building sector, to contribute to the 2 degree pathway means avoiding at least 50% of the projected growth in energy consumption through mainstreaming of highly energy efficient new buildings and a deep renovation of the existing stock of buildings by 2030. The task is not as easy as just changing the light bulbs. Realising the benefits of an energy efficient and low carbon building sector means overcoming persistent policy, market, institutional and capacity barriers. Barriers are common to many countries but are not insurmountable. Greater cooperation to match the needs of stakeholders with available expertise and resources and sharing knowledge more broadly can overcome many barriers. Integrated approaches, such as combining buildings and district energy to maximise efficiencies also exist, but are often overlooked in favour of business as usual. Many solutions exist, but they need to be scaled up to meet the challenge. Collective action could avoid nearly 3 gigatons of CO2 between 2015 and 2050. Clear market transformation strategies to remove barriers must be developed and capacities strengthened in order to implement them. Whether we work for government or we work for industry, those of us that are in positions of influence have a responsibility really to live up to the challenge that sustainability presents to us today. And I think, you know, my commitment is driven by the fact that I do not want to look back in 30, 40 years and regret that I didn't do enough. So I think part of all of us coming together at things like COP is to ensure that we do what it takes in order to make a difference. Green and energy efficient buildings bring multiple business benefits such as better indoor air quality, more natural light and improved health and productivity. Investors profit from slower depreciation and greater occupancy rates, increasing the returns on investments. Developers benefit from increased asset values. The green products deliver clear values to us our customers, shareholders, suppliers, the whole society. We need to increase green construction and continue with the green rating systems, but also focus, on our, focus our communication around some few accepted green indicators so we can attract even more green investments. We are, and I am, fully committed to deliver green projects to our society. Stakeholders need to work together to enhance collaboration at local, national and global scales. Why is energy efficiency important? Well, as is often said, it, the cheapest energy is the energy you don't use. We use too much energy very often and we need to ensure that we uh, curtail and reduce the energy that we use in our homes, in our factories, in our public buildings, in our schools, in our hospitals, right across the board. Innovative solutions exist also for the financing of energy efficient and sustainable buildings. But current levels of investment in energy efficient buildings need to at least double between now and 2050. Increased investment will require policy frameworks to provide regulatory and market certainty. Policy actions that are ambitious and foster innovations will stimulate investments. I think Buildings Day is a really important initiative. Um, I think it's really critical part of the broader debate about the impact of climate change in the context of the COP and COP21. Also it points to the importance of stakeholder involvement that it uh, demonstrates and I think will give an opportunity for us to talk about and uh, um, reference the need to have stakeholder engagement right across the piece, whether it's individual citizens, homeowners, businesses, um, public policy makers, managers of public buildings. I think it's a really important part of, uh, of this uh, in, entire agenda. If we're to realise the progress we envision, then in the next few years, certainly by 2020, every country will need a strategy and action plan for its building sector, adapted to local context. Enhanced collaboration and focused action can help transform the sector, contribute to sustainable development goals and help meet the challenge of climate change.